uh, this was in 1987 that I, that I first got there. And it was marvelous. It was one of the best things, most lucky things that has happened to me. So I've been able to sort of grow up with the relationship beginning in 1987. I left the Diplomatic Corps to teach Chinese at Cornell, and I'd only been there about three semesters. It was, uh, must have been Thanksgiving Eve, 1992, uh, when the Chinese actor, now director, Zhang Wen, who was a dear friend of mine from my time at the embassy, called, and he sort of said, didn't say much, he was just, hey, woman's on you, yeah, ni shall I wa So I said, okay, yeah. I didn't have a family, I was free. I, I quit Cornell and I went down and we filmed Beijing and Zanyu Ye. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, they, they knew that it was gonna be a big show, I didn't. So I've been able to work on US-China relations from all different sides, the artistic creative side, media, education, government, say think tank. Uh, and so that's been a, say, it's been a story of luck. It's been a story of really privilege to work on the relationship. I've seen the range of different modalities in which Chinese and Americans can work with each other, and in some cases work against each other. I think that that's been a, a great benefit to me in my understanding of China. Uh, it is true that a growing number of Americans have the idea that en engagement has failed. That's wrong. The goal of engagement was never to make China more like America. We shouldn't want China to be more like America. So the idea of engaging with China is that you have to work together in ways large and small in order to build joint interests and solve joint problems to avoid conflict. That is still true. It's more important than ever. It's true that China has gained far more than the United States has. I think that's true. But of course, China started from a much lower base. But no, America has benefited tremendously from, in my view, number one, flow of talent, Rin Tsai Waido. The, con the, the contribution that Chinese have made to this country, to America over the past 40 years, in every field of you know, research, medicine, culture, academia, you name it, um, the, the, the talent that has come here and that has helped build this country, this has been a tremendous success story. And again, it doesn't matter where people are. These people have been big bridges for the transmission of knowledge, for joint problem solving, and for cooperative ventures of all kinds. And America has benefited hugely from that. There's not an American university, corporate, or government lab, except the classified ones, uh, that isn't staffed to a considerable degree by Chinese talent. Containment is wrong. Remember, I mean, containment is a, is a Cold War term. America has never tried to contain China. Um, America has actually been key to China's rise. I think Americans can take pride in many aspects of China's rise that we've contributed to. You know, on the one hand, all that China has achieved, no question, you know, this is 99% due to the hard work of the Chinese people, right? On the other hand, there's almost no aspect of China's modernization that you can point to that has nothing to do with the United States, right? Um, and so that's, as a human endeavor, engagement has been very, very successful. I have an idea for a new area of cooperation. It's expensive, but I think it's something that we haven't done yet. It's safety, in particular food safety, but also consumer product safety and pharmaceutical safety. This is a concern of everybody all over the world. It is not political. We come to it as equals. We have the technological expertise and the money to do it. We're the biggest markets we could together give this gift to the world. Both countries face fundamental challenges. How do we reconcile our freedoms, our diversity, our political pluralism with our need for some kind of cultural cohesion and common joint project? I don't think that geopolitics is the most important determinant of our joint future. I think it's the way we respond to technology. How do we respond to the confluence of artificial intelligence supercomputers, big data, surveillance, communications technology, the mapping of the human genome, CRISPR with security concerns on the one hand and commercial concerns 
on the other. It is these forces, these technologies, are going to play a bigger role in the next 40 years in shaping our common humanity than does U.S.-China relations. It is multilateralism, probably multilateralism, that saves us, not Chinese wisdom from China or America. It is the fact that we have to function in a very, very complex, uncertain, multilateral world. If both China and America have good relationships all over the world, we will be bound up in these networks of complexity that limit our ability to follow our own worst instincts and that might give us the time we need to continue to change and adapt in both nations.